Good morning. Thank you for joining us for Easter Sunday worship at Be Ye Lifted on YouTube, a production of King of Kings Lutheran Church in Ann Arbor, Michigan. My name is Marie Duquette, and I am blessed to be the pastor at King of Kings, a congregation that is committed to the work of justice, mercy, and inclusion. Before we begin, you may want to have with you for this worship, you may want a Bible. And if you have a red Lutheran hymnal, the ELW, you may want to have that nearby. You'll also, on this Sunday, want to watch for our new hymn board, which we will show you to tell you the hymn numbers just before we sing. The parts for you to say during today's worship will appear on the screen in bold. And finally, if you're worshiping with us this way today, please let us know you're here in the comments by liking, or better yet, by subscribing. By doing this, we will know who we are reaching, and you will be able to engage with one another in a modified way during worship through the comments. And now, on this Easter morning, let us worship the Lord because he is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Thank you. 
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Today I'm going to pray using words to a new hymn by Carolyn Winfrey Gillette. Gracious God, when we face an unknown future that we can't imagine yet, when the closeness we have treasured turns from blessing into threat, as we miss our friends and loved ones, as we crave community, may we look, God, in this season for a whole new world to be. Jesus faced the lonely desert as a time to look within. There he met such trial and conflict. There he knew you were with him. In this time of separation, when we miss the life we've known, may we hear your voice proclaiming, I am here, you're not alone. May we cherish those around us as we never have before. May we think much less of profit. May we learn what matters more. May we hear our neighbor's suffering. May we see our neighbor's pain. May we learn new ways of offering life and health and hope again. Amen. A reading from Jeremiah, the 31st chapter. At that time, says the Lord, I will be the God of all the families of Israel, and they shall be my people. Thus says the Lord, the people who survived the sword found grace in the wilderness. When Israel sought for rest, the Lord appeared to him from far away. I have loved you with an everlasting love. Therefore, I have continued my faithfulness to you. Again, I will build you, and you shall be built, O virgin Israel. Again, you shall take your tambourines and go forth in the dance of the merrymakers. Again, you shall plant vineyards on the mountains of Samaria. The planters shall plant and shall enjoy the fruit. For there shall be a day when sentinels will call in the hill country of Ephraim, Come, let us go up to Zion, to the Lord our God. Here ends the reading. And now it's time for the children's message. And so, if your children aren't in the room, let's call them. Children, children, come, come, come near your adults' iPhone or Android phone or tablet or laptop or television, whatever you're watching on. Are you here? I can't hear you. Gosh, this is tough. What is this? Just a minute. What is that? Oh, it's Little Mouse again. Little Mouse, what brings you here today? What do you think, Nala? Does Little Mouse have more questions? Oh, you're so nice. You're my little friend. You smell so good. We can go outside and play and have a good time. What you got there, Tiny Mouse? A new friend. I found him on my placemat this morning. He doesn't talk, but I like to hug him. He smells good. Uh huh. I also found these two eggs. I don't know what's inside them, but it's not chickens. Listen. Do you know why people give each other eggs at Easter? Um, no. Well, do you remember that Jesus died and was buried in a tomb for three days? Then he was alive again on Easter morning? Yes, it's my favorite Bible story. Uh, what's that got to do with eggs? Well, people give each other Easter eggs to remind us of the empty tomb. Also, an egg is a symbol of new life because baby chickens come out of eggs. That's a good story. But what about the Easter Bunny? You got me there. No idea. Well, I found two eggs. You can have that one. Let's open them and see what's inside that's not chickens. 
You know, Tiny Mouse, that bunny you're holding is made out of chocolate. Well, hello, little friend. Happy, Happy Easter. Easter. According to the Gospel of John, the 20th chapter, we read, Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one that Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciple set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came following him and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who reached the tomb first also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where to find him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabuni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her.
Well, this is new Easter on YouTube. I'm missing a lot. I'm missing you. I'm missing the lilies that make my nose run. I'm missing the candles and the outfits and the hats and the breakfast that the men make every year missing the egg hunt that I've never been to since I've been your pastor, but I've heard about it and I was going to be there this year. I'm missing the music. God knows we are missing Holy Communion. Easter is different this year. Maybe you have heard or read online People talking about the fact that this Easter is actually a lot more like the first Easter than anything we've ever done. That first Easter when the disciples, the Marys, those who loved and followed Jesus in his lifetime were isolated behind closed doors, fearful, grieving, wondering what was going to happen next, uncertain about their future, uncertain about their past, wondering what they might have done to stop this from coming and knowing it was already too late. And this is where we find ourselves, isn't it? So in many ways, this is like that first Easter and maybe that makes us all the more hungry for the good news. I noticed this year in looking at the Easter story, though, a couple of things. One is that this good news takes a while to shake out, takes a while to fully take hold, takes a while for them to fully believe it. Maybe because of all that has gone before, of all the, the pain and the death and the fear and the uncertainty and the isolation and the locked doors and the oppression and the empire. Maybe for all those reasons, even Jesus coming back from the dead did not elicit the kind of joy, celebration, Today, most certainly, we'd have fireworks, right? That we might expect when we hear the story. And I want to look at that for a minute. Because in the four Gospels, the four stories of what happened on Easter morning, they're all a little bit different, which makes it woefully hard to tell the story without reading it from the Bible. One account has an angel comes with an earthquake. The angel's face is like lightning. This is how Matthew tells it. The angel rolls the stone away and sits on it. Great move, if it was a movie. And tells the women, multiple, who come that Jesus is not there. He has risen, as he said. and. He has gone ahead of them to Galilee. Go tell the disciples he'll meet you there. That's one account. Mark's account is really short because Mark's gospel is really short. If you've ever wanted to just read one of the gospels, go with Mark. And Mark's, and Mark's gospel ends with the women fearful, trembling, they say nothing to anyone. Luke has two angels, two angels in Luke. The women run and tell the disciples as they have been told to do this good news, but the disciples don't believe them. Go figure. They don't believe the women. And then there's John's, which you heard this morning. It's just Mary, all by herself. I mean, 
Peter and the disciple that Jesus loved because the disciple said that Jesus loved him best but those two they do show up shortly or for a, a cameo appearance uh, they take a race to the tomb when Mary tells them that Jesus body is not there they race and they check it all out and they note where the linens are left behind in the tomb and then and then they go home and Mary is left crying outside the tomb and so you see in all four accounts the ecstatic joy we might expect isn't clear it's not immediate those who loved Jesus are still in shock and Mary weeps outside the tomb Jesus then speaks to her at first she doesn't even recognize him she is so overwrought with pain but when he calls her name Mary then she realizes this is Jesus risen from the dead here we are crying some some of us might be wishing we could cry because there's a lot of emotions we are all trying to manage right now angry at people who are being murdered persecuted oppressed by those in power by those who think they do not have the right to love and be loved and live free it's happening everywhere but now we have the complication of this virus this corona virus that the entire world is now engaged with fighting the entire world mourning their dead the entire world looking to other nations for answers New York City not being able to keep up with burials this is where we find ourselves this Easter morning and I know that many people have noticed and I have too that there's some interesting things happening right now that suggest that maybe God is doing something new rumor has it that some of the uh, horrific effects of air pollution are subsiding what will we do with that how could God use that to help us live into a new day where we are not so threatened by an environment that we have come to take advantage of I've heard I've heard a lot of great things about people helping people governors sharing the load celebrities offering millions to buy ventilators I've I've seen the goodness of God Almighty made manifest through people and still we cry like Mary and still there is grief there is tears I think it might be worth noting this year two things one is that one of the things the four Gospels does agree about is that the women or woman or woman and couple disciples who go to the tomb always go before dawn it is still dark it is still scary to be going to a tomb where you anticipate you will see the body of Jesus Christ the Sun has not shone yet on a new day and the second thing is that Jesus shows up in John's Gospel to Mary right there in the dark 
as she is crying outside the tomb. That's where she sees Jesus. And so I wonder, as we live into the reality of our world today in 2020, a frightening world in which we don't know what will happen next, but we are watching for God to usher in a new day and to raise up life in our midst and to heal the sick. I do know that Jesus shows up in the dark. And so we can expect to find him there in our darkness when we are crying when we are looking for the living among the dead, when we aren't sure where this is leading, when we tell the truth to people who don't believe us. If Easter is about Jesus Christ defeating death at last, being raised from the dead, that you and I and all the people in the world might hold on to that hope that right beside death is life and that God is known for bringing life out of death. If we can hold on to that, then maybe we can also learn during this time not to necessarily look for that life when our church is full and we can smell the lilies and the choir sings three anthems and we come to the table and have Holy Communion maybe this is a time for us to realize God shows up to us in the dark while we're still afraid while we're still crying and calls us each by name reading a couple of weeks ago from Ezekiel, we learned God can breathe new life even into dry bones. Today, as I close each petition, I will say, breath of God, and I invite you to reply, breathe in me. Let us pray. 
filled with the Holy Spirit, we join with the Church in every place, praying for the world that God so loves. Lord, today and every day, help us remember that you are walking beside us, and in times of terrible trial when we feel we can no longer walk, you gently carry us in your mothering arms. Breath of God, breathe in me. Lord, open our ears to hear you in the singing of the birds and the voices of friends and family. Open our eyes to see you in the budding flowers of spring and the smiles of loved ones as well as strangers. Breath of God, breathe in me. Lord, open our hearts to remember to love our neighbor as ourselves. Help us to practice spiritual closeness while maintaining social distance. Breath of God, breathe in me. Lord, open our minds to accept the wonder of the open tomb. Help us no longer grieve and look for Christ there, but find him in the world all around us. Breath of God, breathe in me. Lord, open our spirits and flow through us, bringing the love of Christ to the world, as we remember his loving sacrifice of grace. For he died for our sins and rose again today to bring the world everlasting life. Breath of God, breathe in me. Today we pray for Mike Patton in hospice care the people of Santa Maria de Jesus and other villages in Guatemala, the friends and family of Greg Detmer, Pepe Zuniga, and Mary Lou Ferrenti. We continue to pray for Leo Mejia, Jessica, Julie, Dolores, Adrian, Virginia, Miguel. Lord, we lift up to you now, aloud or in the silence of our hearts, all those in need. We continue to pray for all those on our long-term prayer list. Sorellis Maria, Cindy, Shane, Jessica, Clark, Karen, Ann, Daniel, Lloyd, Bob, Melissa, Michael, John, Jody and her daughter, Dennis, Letty, Rob, Corinna, Arlene, Jesse, Jim and Nancy, and Rose. And for all those serving in the military, Ian and Bethany Nystrom, Julia Chenoweth, and Diamond Green. Lord, thank you for your guidance and presence in this unexpected Lenten season. This year has opened our eyes and hearts in many ways. We pray for continued guidance in the weeks and months ahead. May we meet all challenges from a place of love as Christ taught us. Breath of God, breathe in me. Inspire us to live our lives in hope of our life with you in heaven and draw us to you more each day. With bold confidence in your love, Almighty God, we place all for whom we pray into your eternal care. Through Christ our Lord. Amen.
May God give you grace never to sell yourself short. Grace to risk something big for something good. Grace to remember the world is too dangerous for anything but truth and too small for anything but love. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be with us now and forever. Go in peace. Serve the Lord.